currently DS-8201 is not available anywhere in any uh, country. However, it is undergoing regulatory evaluation in the United States, and the word is that we might have it available in early 2020 for our patients. In terms of where it will be approved, what disease setting, clearly only HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. Um, and it's not totally clear what line of therapy. I don't think that it would be approved in the frontline setting. Um, I don't think we have data to support its use yet in the second line setting in place of TDM1. There is an ongoing phase two, three trial that will evaluate whether it is going to be able to replace TDM1. Um, but I do think that uh, people are probably going to move it up and use it in the third line setting uh, and beyond. The activity level that was seen with this drug in the Destiny uh, study was, was pretty extraordinary, so I don't think we're going to wait till sixth, seventh, eighth line. I think third line is probably where people are going to have a good comfort level. There are other trials that are evaluating the effect of trastuzumab directs TIC and, and breast cancer. Uh, one of them is looking at a direct comparison to treatment of physician's choice. So there's some uh, license for physicians to choose alternative chemotherapy, chemotherapy trastuzumab regimens that could be considered. And that'll be an important uh, comparison, not unlike when TDM1 was being developed, it was compared to treatment of physician's choice. The other trial is looking at uh, trastuzumab directs TKN. Uh, compared to TDM1 directly, and this would be a, an obvious effort to move this drug up in the algorithm for how we treat metastatic disease. And there, very interestingly, we have early uh, data from a smaller trial suggesting that this drug may be effective in individuals who have tumors expressing low levels of HER2. Uh, so in that population, which may ultimately create yet another slice of the pie, not HER2 positive, but HER2 low expressing, where we wouldn't have considered any HER2 directed therapy, uh, this drug is also being evaluated. And it's interesting too, there's some speculation that the interstitial lung disease, possibly because HER2 is expressed on lung tissue, that if you have very low levels and you use this drug, maybe it's affecting the lung tissue in some sort of adverse way. Uh, that's certainly completely speculative at this point, but uh, if it is effectively treating tumor cells with low levels of HER2 expression, it's conceivable that it may have some bystander effects on other tissues as well. Traditionally, we've evaluated ER, PR, and HER2 and making decisions regarding what are the best treatment options for metastatic disease. If a patient was HER2 positive either by IHC or FISH, then they're a candidate for HER2-directed therapy. However, we now have a drug that potentially is working in HER2 low tumors, and this would have been a category not considered in the past, and as such, the, uh, the sweep of breast cancers that may be a potential candidate for this drug is much broader. And what we have to think about when we're evaluating new patients is testing them for HER2, even low expressors, because there may be a new therapeutic option for them.